Hi and welcome to a British audiophile. If you don't know me already, my name is Taron and welcome to my review of the Bukar A500 speakers. Now this is a well-reviewed, well-liked speaker system amongst the YouTube hi-fi reviewing community. So the likelihood is that you've probably come across a review of these already and you're aware that if you buy these speakers with the optional digital hub, it can form a wireless active speaker system with built-in room correction. I really wanted to address two things in this particular review. I wanted to see how far this technology had actually come and whether it could compete with a more conventional hi-fi setup, something like the Bukar S400s and the Hegel H95 that in combination retail for a similar price, they're a little bit cheaper. And I did quite a bit of A-B comparison between the two. So let's see how the A500s got on. The Buka A500s retail for 3,500 euros in white. They're also available in black. And if you want them in the walnut finish, that's an extra 150 euros. There's a control hub that's available for an additional 700 euros, taking the total to 4,200 euros with the speakers in the standard finish. At first glance, you'd be forgiven for thinking that the A500s are just an active version of the S400s. They have a similar front profile, 360 millimeters high and 180 millimeters wide. The tweeter and waveguide are identical to the S400s. However, the tweeter is now above the woofer in a more conventional arrangement. The reason it was the other way around in the S400s was that Bukar got better phase alignment from the drivers that way. And that means making sure that the sound from each driver hits your ears at the same time. They don't need to do that with the A500s because the phase alignment can now be done digitally within the DSP engine of the speaker. The A500s are 40 millimeters deeper than the S400s at 280 millimeters deep. The 160 mil or six inch paper woofer is the development of the aluminium woofer used in the S400s. It wasn't available at the time when the S400s was being designed. There's an identical woofer on the back of the A500s instead of the 230 mil by 150 or nine by six inch passive radiator in the S400s. This makes the A500s a sealed enclosure. The additional driver and its position allows Bukart flexibility with the configuration and the dispersion of the speaker. The play amplifier on the back houses three 150 watt Class D modules by Texas Instruments. Now no tweeter on a domestic speaker requires 150 watts, but it's more cost effective to have the same modules. Also inside each speaker is three Cirrus Logic 4398 DACs. That's right, one DAC per driver and a quad core processor that takes care of the DSP functions. Connections on the back of the speaker are limited to one XLR analog input, which is converted to digital, run through the DSP engine and converted back to analog again. Traditional audio files, take a deep breath. There's a USB connection for downloading master tunings. I'll come to that later. There's also a button to increase or reduce the sensitivity of the speaker by 6 dB. There are a series of LEDs that indicate the speaker's position within a stereo or home cinema setup. And there's a button to pair the device wirelessly to compatible devices. The A500s can be paired with any wiser compatible device. For example, certain LG TVs or the Primair SC15 streamer and preamp. There's other devices as well. You can order the A500s with the Platin Hub directly from Bukart it's manufactured in the same Hansing Technologies factory in Nanjing, China, that the Bukart speakers are made. It has a comprehensive array of connectivity, one analog RCA connection, three optical, one three and a half mini jack, a coaxial input, a USB input, HDMI arc, Bluetooth 5.0 aptX. The hub will accept streaming via AirPlay UPnP or Chromecast where it also acts as a Rune endpoint. The hub itself is an inexpensive plastic looking unit, but at least it has an RF remote so you can place it out of sight. 
For those of you who want to leave it on display, it's a shame that it doesn't have basic functionality on the hub itself, like volume and input selection. Instead, you have to rely on the supplied remote control, but at least Bukar have upgraded it from the Platin's plastic remote to an aluminium one, giving it a premium feel. Wiser stands for wireless speaker and audio and enable devices like the A500s and the Platin Hub form their own wireless connection independent of your Wi-Fi. And unlike Bluetooth, there's no lossy compression. In fact, they'll stream in up to 96 kilohertz and 24 bit resolution. There's also one tenth the latency that you experience with Bluetooth. So if you're connecting them to a TV, you won't experience any delay in sound. The Platin Hub includes a room correction system. Now that's there to compensate for acoustic inadequacies in your listening environment. It only works up to 250 hertz, but that's where most of the problems lie anyway, in the low frequency and bass region. More on that coming up in a minute. Now I'm sorry to say that I couldn't get on with the room correction system in this Platin device and I can't say definitively where the problem lies. The system requires you to download the app onto an iOS device, either your iPhone or your iPad. I use my iPad, that was the only compatible device I had. I tried a bunch of different setups and each time I got a different correction curve, as you'd expect. I exported the filter to the device, it made the correction, it changed the sound and ran fine. The only issue was that when I came to actually listening, the bass in each case sounded overemphasized and bloated no matter what I did. Now, it could be an issue with my iPad itself. The system requires the device to take the measurements, but I think that's unlikely. It could be an issue with the software or the fact that you're not using a calibrated microphone. In any case, I did all of my critical listening with the room correction off. Now I know that Bukar Audio is working on a new app that should be out shortly, so hopefully users of that app won't encounter these problems. The A500s can be set up in a whole bunch of different configurations by virtue of changing the settings in the DSP engine. It's something that Bukar Audio refers to as master tunings. Now the stock or standard setup is a two and a half way design where the tweeter hands over to the front woofer at 2800 Hz and the front woofer will play down to 25 Hz. The bass is augmented by the rear woofer which will play from 150 Hz also down to 25 Hz. So how did it sound? Well okay but not necessarily great. We're not off to the best of starts here are we? But don't worry things do get quite a bit better. Dynamics were impressive. That's what this speaker is all about. It's a real gutsy performer. Bass had extension and weight but it wasn't the last word in speed. The mid-range was full, but the leading edges of notes were a little bit softened and the high frequencies were a touch rolled off. The overall tonal balance was on the warm side of neutral. The soundstage was quite wide, not the widest I've come across. They extended a little bit beyond the speakers left and right, but it lacked soundstage depth and the ability to place instruments within that soundstage, what I refer to as imaging, was again reasonably good. Not the best I've come across, not the worst. Now the second configuration I tried was a two and a half way near field setup. Now that's favoring on axis performance as opposed to off axis performance for people who sit relatively close to their speakers. And it sounded pretty good as long as you remained within around two meters of the speakers. Beyond that, clarity and definition fell away, but that's to be expected in this particular type of setup. Within two meters, it still had great dynamics, bass weight and extension, but now the bass was faster and the mid-range was cleaner as well, with much more nicely defined leading edges. The highs were also much more naturally extended. On the downside, the soundstage was still relatively flat and there was a little bit of graininess and grittiness in the mid-range, in particular in the upper mid-range that became apparent. There's a whole bunch of master tunings on Bukart's website that are all a variation on a theme, all with the mid-range slightly more prominent. The variations are slightly different treble response and slightly different bass response. Now in this particular configuration, as the name suggests, vocals and other mid-range instruments became a little bit more prominent. 
To my ears, they sounded a touch aggressive and that slight lack of refinement that I picked up in the near field configuration was a little bit more noticeable in this particular setup. There's a three-way master tune where the front woofer acts like a mid-range unit, taking over duties from the tweeter at 2800 Hz before passing the baton to the rear woofer at 150 Hz. Now this isn't a setup that's suited to large rooms or where you want maximum SPL levels and that's due to the fact that you've only got one drive unit taking care of the low frequencies. I have a medium sized room and to my ears this was by far the finest sounding setup. That mid-range opened up quite a bit and the lack of refinement that the mid-range had, that gritty quality, was to a large extent gone. And I think that's primarily because the front mid-range woofer was only having to deal with mid-range frequencies so there was a reduction in distortion. For less than half the price of the Bukar A500s and the Platin Hub, you can buy the Bukar S400s. That leaves you enough money left over to go and buy a decent amplifier, something like the Hegel H95 that I reviewed and still have change in your pocket. Now the Hegel H95 is a fine sounding amplifier with a decent inbuilt DAC and streaming capability. So quite a bit of functionality there. As for the Bukar S400s, well, they're not the last word in transparency at their price. The ATC SCM 19s, the Amphion Argon 1s, and my Proact Response 1 SCs all sound cleaner. But the Bukar S400s, thanks to their passive radiator, have the kind of dynamics and bass extension that's associated with a compact floor stander. And they're very forgiving of partnering equipment and the room you place them in. In fact, consider them the Mother Teresa of all stand mount speakers. So how do the Bukar S400s and the Hegel H95 compete with the A500s and the Platin Hub? Well, in terms of dynamics and bass extension, I'd have to give that to the A500s. And you could argue that they have the more even tone. The S400s are a little rolled off at the top. But in terms of sound stage, I think the S400s have a wider sound stage. They're certainly quite a bit deeper. And in terms of refinement, I'd have to give that to the S400s and the Hegel combination as well. Little variations in tone are just better preserved. If you want the full setup procedure, Mads Bukart's actually produced a YouTube video on that. So there's no point in me repeating the same stuff. I'll just link that in the description notes so those of you who are interested can click on that link and access that video. I'll just summarize things here. Essentially what you have to start with is to pair up these speakers to either the hub or another wiser compatible device. This is done simply by pressing the pair button for a few seconds on the back of each speaker until the wireless LED flashes and then pressing the wireless button on the wiser compatible device. If it's been successfully paired, the wireless button on the speaker will be permanently lit. If you're using the Platin Hub, you'll want to download the Google Home app onto your device, follow a series of on-screen instructions to set up the device and connect it to your Wi-Fi network. You can then stream to the device via Google Cast or AirPlay. To take advantage of the room correction system on the Platin Hub, you'll have to download the customized Bukar app. Take note that at present, it can only be used with iOS devices, iPhone 6S or newer. Master tunings have to be downloaded from the Bukar website onto a USB stick in the FAT32 format. You simply switch off the speaker, plug in the USB stick, switch the speaker back on again. You'll see the LEDs circle to indicate that master tunes have been successfully installed. There's not much to talk about here in terms of partnering equipment. Essentially, if you've got the A500s with a wiser compatible device, either the Platin Hub or something else, you've got an entire system. Just add whatever source components you want. But for those of you who are thinking of using this speaker as an active speaker in the traditional sense with an analog connection through the XLR connection, I think you're throwing your money away. What you've got to remember is that through that connection, the analog signal is digitized, run through the DSP engine, 
and then converted back to analog again. As a result, I think for that particular scenario, there are better analog active speakers out there if that's what you want to do. I know it sounds like I poured cold water over a hyped up product, but that wasn't my intention. Sure, I have a couple of gripes, but when I pointed them out to Mads Bukart, he made me aware that solutions are already well on their way. There's a new hub coming down the line, a new app, and improvements to the DSP engine will be happening all the time. This product will continue to evolve and improve, and it'll be interesting to see where it is a year or two down the line. As it stands today, for the right kind of user, it's a decent sounding option, especially if you get the right master tuning. The dynamics are quite frankly crazy and the flexibility is fabulous. It gets a recommended from this channel. So that's it. I hope you've liked my review of the Bukar A500s. If you have, please hit that like button. Please share this video. And if you like what I'm doing with this channel, please think about subscribing. But for today, for now, a British audiophile signing off.